All right, here we are for the final portion of today's lecture. This is going to be part four of lecture 13 of CNG 4412 steel and concrete design. I just want to do a brief introduction to shear in steel beams. So shear in beams, uh, shear stress in beams, Uh, shear stress in beams. So if you have a, say a point load, if, if you consider something with a point load in the middle, this is a simply supported beam with a point load, for example. If you have a load P here and reactions P over two and P over two and P over two, we know we would end up with a shear diagram or a shear diagram that is something like this something kind of like this, with V equal to P over 2 and P over 2. Uh, now, um, for, and this particular shear stress, the shear, uh, the shear diagram will in turn produce some shear distribution. Uh, if you have a rectangular section, it would look something like this. For a rectangle, your shear distribution, if so again, if you had a rectangular cross section, where your neutral axis is here, your uh, shear diagram, or your, sorry, your shear stress distribution would look something like this. Like this here. Just kind of a parabolic distribution, like this here. So if you had a simple plate, rectangular section, etc. Tom Max, and you remember, you may remember, uh, so again, this is our X section, this is your X section, this is your shear distribution, shear stress, and then um, the formula for, in gener generically, for shear stress distribution is VQ divided by IT. This is sort of the, from base principles, VQ over IT. This is what you see in, um, in mechanics materials. And feel free to check out my mechanics materials videos if you want to see where that's developed. Now, for an I-shaped section, it's slightly different because we don't have a purely rectangular cross-section. Obviously, it's much more complex. For an I-shaped section, For an I-shaped section, let's, let me show you the actual sort of theoretical shear distribution that's actually present. Your shear stress is going to be higher towards the center. We've already seen that with the, the rectangular section, but if you look at the, this from the side and its stress distribution, it's going to be like this. So we have a shear, a shear stress distribution like this. Again, using the formula T equals VQ divided by IT. But it's very low in the, in the flanges. And then it spikes up uh, very low in the flanges like this, like this. Then it jumps up when it gets to the web. There's a large discontinuity, large discontinuity. And then it sort of parabolically increases up to some level like this, kind of like this. And this is our tall max. However, though, so we see here, though, that, the, uh, that there is very little shear stress actually present in the flanges. It's almost all present in the web. And so your actual average shear stress across the entire thing might be just something like this. Your tall average might just be something like this. Your tall average might be something like this. And where tall average can be calculated as V divided by the area of the web. So basically, we see here, even from pure theory, uh, the, uh, even from pure theory, the flange carries very, very little of the uh, shear capacity, almost, of the shear stress. Almost all of it is carried in the web. And so AISC basically 
we could use, now if you want to when you're calculating a steel beam, you can use this full VQ over IT, but for, uh, for most rolled, flange shape, rolled uh, steel shapes, um, shear generally doesn't control. And because of, even from mechanics materials, we learned that web carries almost all the shear. Uh, we make an assumption, basically for AISC, we make a simplification that says, you know what, because the, f the flanges carry so little shear, we're just going to neglect what little capacity they do provide. So the AISC methodology, the AISC simplification, basically just says neglect the flanges. Neglect flange shear capacity. It's so small that it doesn't really contribute only in uh, almost anything. It's a tiny fraction, you know, one or two percent, something like that. So we're just going to neglect it and assume that web takes all the shear. And because of that, we can just treat it as a simple rectangular plate, and that makes calculating the shear capacity so much easier. Assume web carries entire shear capacity or entire shear load. Carries all the shear. And we're going to use a formula for the area of the web, uh, basically taking it not to H, but to D, the whole depth of the beam. We're going to use area of web equal to D times TW. And the, uh, the code approach here is going to be, the code approach is going to be VVN must be greater than V ultimate, the ultimate shear, and phi V, the phi for shear, is going to be 0 0.9. And this is found in chapter G of the code. So this is chapter G of the manual. And the equation for Vn is going to be 0 0.6 times Fy times the area of the web times the factor times called Cv. And this is equation um, G2-1. Now, however though, um, generally, and, and really this is it, this is really it. I mean, th it seems that this might be more complex, but really this is it. So this is really the only equation you need to use. Now, um, here, at least for most shapes, uh, for most shapes, this is it. The CV factor is where it gets complex. Uh, the CV factor is where it gets, com gets complex. Uh, but in most cases, CV is equal to 1.0. Equals 1.0. If you have one, nearly all again. Uh, nearly all, so it occurs for nearly all, uh, so uh, will be equal to 1.0, 1.0 for nearly all rolled W shapes, uh, rolled W shapes uh, with Fy equal to 50 KSI. And I do need to discuss this uh, CV briefly. Um, the CB is a CV here is a reduction factor, shear reduction factor uh, coefficient to take into account uh, reduction coefficient. This accounts for shear buckling for elastic and inelastic buckling. Now typically what you do is, now usually you don't have to use the more complex forms of this, um, but um, but uh, generally uh, generally CB is equal, generally CB is equal to 1.0, um, but we do always need to check to make sure it is. Uh, we do always need to check to make sure it is. And we do that by using the equation here, 
to confirm, I should say. And this is found in that, it's, it's found in the equation, it's found in the section on G2-2, that equation, that value. And basically you're doing a calculation, a compactness check on the web itself. H divided by TW, now not, no, not D over TW, but H over TW is less than or equal to 2.24 times the square root of E divided by Fy. 2.24 divided by the square root of E divided by Fy. And in almost all cases, this is going to be, this is going to be fine. So as long as, uh, as long as this is true, as your web is compact here, uh, uh, for this criteria, for shear, CB will equal, will equal 1.0. And there are, only a, there are only a few exceptions to this. So um, here, uh, exceptions. There are a few exceptions for rolled up shapes, for rolled shapes. Uh, so for example, we have a W, uh, some W44s, uh, W40, so I do want us to make sure that you always check this. W40 by 149, W36 by 135, W33 by 118. Uh, w30 by 90, w24 by 55, and really these are the main rolled shapes that you have to worry about this. Uh, 55, w16 by 26, and w12 by 14. The, yes, these are basically the, these are basically all of them. W12 by 14. Uh, so these are the exceptions. Generally, rolled shapes, with the exceptions of these. And really, generally, for old shapes, uh, uh, CV will equal to 1.0. And even more generally, usually shear does not control. It's very rare. We don't design for shear. Um, we design for a moment and then check for shear. It's very rarely that shear controls uh, for old shapes. Uh, but then where does it control? Uh, where does it control? When do we need the other equations? If you look down in section B, you'll see there are a whole bunch of other equations for CV, and uh, I won't go into them in this class. You can read on, you can read up on them if you wish. Those are used especially for built-up members, uh, deep sections, that sort of thing. Uh, when do you need other equations? When do you need the other equations? Well, you need them uh, primarily for built-up sections with long, slender webs made directly from plates. Uh, for built-up sections, for built-up sections, with long slender webs, made directly from welded plate. Made directly from welded plate. All right, and that's a brief introduction to shear. That's what we're going to cover uh, for beam for steel beam shear in this class. But in more advanced classes where you learn how to design, say, reinforced uh, girders, that sort of thing, uh, with web stiffeners, then it becomes more critical. All right, that'll do it for today. Thank you for watching, and as always.